developing countries across the globe are driving solar voltaic or PV energy development as they aim to sustain economic growth whilst also pursuing their environmental goals. As global projections for PV capacity continue to increase, developing countries are expected to lead future developments with nearly half of the 540 gigawatts of global installations expected by 2021. In fact, developing countries have so far outpaced Europe, Japan and the US in the last decade by increasing their share of global capacity from around 5% in 2016 to over 38% in 2016. That's a growth from 6 gigawatts to over 291 gigawatts. This rapid expansion has been the result of a dramatic decline in the cost of PV equipment and the local availability of abundant solar resources. According to the World Bank, sustaining this growth over the next decade will require developing more efficient mechanisms for capacity procurement, de-risking of projects and investments, as well as successful deployment of utility-scale PV power plants that can compete with conventional forms of electricity generation. Therefore, the question of how developing countries can create the conditions that promote utility-scale solar PV investments with competitive, low, yet sustainable prices is of keen interest to governments, analysts, investors and of course consumers. But before looking ahead, it's useful to look where we're coming from. Taking their lead from the early wave of solar deployment in developed countries, the last four years has ushered in a shift in the procurement of large-scale photovoltaic generation as developing countries kicked off a wave of solar auctions. Whilst competitive auctions have long been recognised as a cost-effective mechanism for procuring utility-scale grade renewable projects, in comparison to other options, like feed-in tariffs, it was during this period that for the first time auction revealed consistently low utility-scale PV prices in developed countries. For example, we saw prices less than 10 cents a kilowatt hour in India and Brazil, and even lower at 4 cents a kilowatt hour in Chile, Mexico and the UAE. These low prices shone a light on the emergence of solar PV as a cost-competitive option for utility-scale power generation, and opened unprecedented opportunities for a paradigm shift in the power sector in many more developing countries. Now, low PV prices could allow, for the first time, wide access to abundant and cheap power in developing countries where solar resources are widely available but energy demand is often unmet. However, concerns over the viability of exceptionally low PV prices and therefore the actual successful deployment of those projects has led to a series of less than complementary headlines. Because of auctions that act on prices, many experts harboured concerns that the auction-based PV procurement methods could lead to overly low or financially viable prices, resulting in projects of poor quality or projects not being built at all. Despite these concerns, solar PV plants are rapidly becoming a lead choice for large utility-scale power projects in developing countries for three main reasons. Firstly, and perhaps most importantly, the sun usually shines and is typically bright. Areas of good or very good insulation are abundant, land for utility-scale PV may be cheap, and the water requirements of PV plants are minimal. Secondly, technological innovation, economies of scale, and efficiency improvements in global solar PV manufacturing have led to a rapid decline in costs, making the technology increasingly affordable. According to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, a research and analytics arm of Bloomberg, between 2010 and 2016, manufacturing costs of solar modules declined by nearly 74%, falling from $1.85 per watt to just shy of $0.50 cents a watt, and non-module costs declined by 53%, down from $1.30 per watt to just $0.66 cents per watt. Finally, solar PV plants are relatively easy to install, operate and maintain. PV plants can be built in 6 to 12 months compared to 4 to 10 years required to build hydro or fossil fuel plants. And furthermore, PV power plants can be built incrementally and as solar technology is highly modular, allowing the construction of smaller power plants that can be easily expanded as demand grows. While solar PV does offer unprecedented opportunities to transform electricity sectors, scaling up PV deployment at low competitive prices requires significant de-risking and is seen as a prerequisite for attracting large volumes of investments into many developing countries.
PV project developers and investors alike face high political, macroeconomic and technical risks. As Westbine reported in 2013, these risks show in high financing costs that mirror perceived or actual informational, technical, regulatory, financial and administrative barriers and their associated investment costs. Thus, the price of solar electricity will vary in different countries as developers seek to reflect the risks that that project itself faces in those markets. Hence, to mitigate some of this risk, government support mechanisms in the form of power purchase agreements are thus usually the key. Although auctions are generally more cost effective for procuring renewable energy capacity than fits, no single idea of procurement option exists because the performance of different instruments depends on country specifics, policy goals, desired size and overall capacity, and of course policy design. For new technologies, fits can be a good driver for development, but as technologies mature, auctions may be more appropriate as they bring cost effectiveness. For example, European countries with FITs, such as Germany or Spain, experience early and rapid development of renewables compared to countries with auctions, such as France, Ireland and of course the UK. However, initial FIT designs with long-term payments often lack the agility to allow rapidly evolving solar PV costs and some countries induce periodic automatic payments to downshift those FITs to minimise the overpayments to developers. As technology matured, Auctions in the emerging economies of South Africa, Brazil and India were more cost efficient and achieved a lower price unit of electricity. Yet, despite their cost efficiencies, competitive auctions face concerns over unrealistic low bids that may lead to unviable projects that never get developed. Yet, given developing countries' priority to procure large, utility-scale PV capacities at the lowest price, auctions remain a popular choice. In terms of pricing, the most commonly used metric for assessing and benchmarking the financial competitive of solar PV prices, as with other generation technologies, is the levelised cost of electricity. This is a simple metric that provides the price per kilowatt hour based on the cost distributed over the entire length of the power project. Policymakers use this to assess the potential need for financial incentives to make solar attractive for developers or investors. On the other hand, Project developers and those investors use the levelised cost of electricity to assess the financial viability of project, to help them estimate revenue requirements and to estimate competitiveness compared to other projects. Reducing the levelised cost of electricity is therefore critical for project developers' finances and profitability. There are a variety of ways that the policymakers can influence the power price. While some of these policies and conditions can be good auction design, there's no single model for auctions that is uniquely effective. That being said, the published auction results from multiple developing countries indicate that low prices for utility-scale PV appear ex ante financially viable and in most cases should be able to support the sustainable expansion of PV capacity for years to come. Stripping it back to the nuts and bolts, for auctions held between 2013 and 16. Prices in the range of 6 to 8 cents a kilowatt hour are consistent with market fundamentals, and we saw prices as low as 3 cents a kilowatt hour, which can be viable projects under excellent solar conditions. Of course, an obvious question to ask is are we picking just the low hanging fruit? The PV projects that have already been developed and procured through auctions were amongst the first in their respective markets. Developers involved in these projects have often exploited the best sites, have significant investment support, and engage in ambitious strategies to enter a new market. Therefore, these products can be thought of as one of a kind in those respective plays. As markets scale up and mature, these one of a kind deals will naturally represent a proportionally smaller fraction of the market, impacting the average price. However, does this not mean that prices will automatically go up? Probably not. As technology learning will continue to drive down the cost of components and commercial banks will price technology risk lower once they see several projects developed. The falling PV prices since 2013 have been led by developing countries. This only serves to validate the increasing affordability of PV and makes a compelling case for increasing deployment of solar voltaic systems across new markets outside of the US and the Europe. The continued large-scale development of PV generation will depend on how low prices translate into actual project outcomes and how financially viable these projects actually turn out to be.
each country, market and sector has its own unique dynamics and opportunities, but it seems increasingly clear that the future looks bright for solar generation.